Good morning, everyone. Um, this is, my name is Mo, and I'm with Stonefly. Um, I'm going to go for a few minutes and talk about our products, and then, um, you know, if you have any question, please uh, post your questions. We'll be answering questions throughout the webinar. And then um, I have another person who is David, actually showing you how to set up uh, the storage for Veeam uh, in Azure Cloud. Um, so I'm going to get started. Um, uh, we, you know, Stonefly has been in business for 16 years. Um, we are the originator of iSCSI uh, products. So if you go to iSCSI.com, you go to Stonefly. Uh, we have been uh, producing uh, products in the iSCSI uh, area and storage area and as an OEM uh, and uh, as a manufacturer of the, some of the appliances at, at the same time software. Uh, some of the products that you might have uh, seen is the, you know, our, our uh, uh, sand products, uh, which are iSCSI product and fiber channel product. Then we go to the, uh, the, the cluster product, which are high availability, uh, redundant products. Then it goes to scale-out NAS products, which are basically unlimited nodes of scales-out NAS, uh, provide single namespace storage. Um, and, uh, you know, and we have uh, another unit, which is basically in the NAS area, which is, uh, we call it uh, replica systems, uh, which uh, uh, have uh, redundancy per node and uh, at the same time scale out uh, uh, node. Uh, so any of these products are very good candidates for Veeam um, in on-premises uh, storage. Uh, a lot of it is uh, people use this product for a very large uh, um, on-premises uh, uh, Veeam uh, uh, st storage. Uh, this is a single unit. This is goes to uh, uh, scale out unit, which basically it will uh, will have multiple units as uh, it, in a in a scale out manner, and there is unlimited nodes, uh, very fast, very easy to operate. Uh, present you with a single or multiple uh, namespace, and uh, so you can have terabytes or petabytes or exabytes as you grow, and by just adding more nodes. And this is the same paradigm we use in. Azure as well, so you can start with one node and then go second and third node and so on and so forth. And every node you add, you just add the storage to the, your existing uh, uh, storage. And um, uh, we also make a specific appliances uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, Veeam. Um, this is our hyperconverged appliance appliances. Uh, we have a uh, software-based uh, version of it, and we have appliance-based version of it. Uh, appliance-based version of it, uh, we, you can um, not only use it as storage, but you can also uh, create uh, virtual machines capability and uh, run your, um, your uh, it has embedded hypervisor, so all the uh, 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 virtual machine that uh, you back up and you bring to this device as a storage. You can also spin it up uh, uh, on this appliance, so it would be, uh, you know, used as a disaster, complete disaster recovery as on-premises. The same appliance uh, can be deployed on the remote uh, location and in the cloud. So the old uh, appliances being physical or virtual in remote location or in the cloud, all uh, have the same interface and function the same way. So one or the other doesn't make any difference all of them across three uh, paradigm of on-premises, remote location, your lower remote location, customer remote location, managed services, or cloud-based systems, either in public cloud, Azure, or private cloud. It's pretty much the same. Um, uh, and. Uh, you can, uh, it, the hypervisor could be uh, hybrid, could be ESXi VMware hybrid if a uh, customer has that kind of, uh, uh, the, you know, uh, hypervisor on-premises and using vSphere or it could be of uh, Hyper-V uh, which is used as system center. This system is also managed by vSphere and system center as well so you can go and see this appliance in those uh, application. So the backup module actually backs the stuff up and brings it in. 
and gets a spin up. So we have a specific appliance which we call disaster recovery appliances and these are already configured for Veeam. Uh, we start from a work group, very small, maybe uh, 10, 10, 20, 10, 15, uh, uh, the host uh, maybe 10 as much as then goes to the mid-range and goes all the way to enterprise and enterprise you can scale out and there's no limit of how many uh, uh, you know uh, nodes you can have so as the the host increases you can have proxies and host increases as well the same architectures you have hypervisors and you have a you know, this is a Veeam backup uh, which is the modules gets added to our appliance and then it's a full appliance for disaster recovery. The backup appliance brings it in. Uh, snapshots, it's a native snapshot to it because it's, uh, it creates a SAN capability within appliance. There's a storage controller, which are, which are our own storage controllers, gets integrated, provide uh, snapshot, replication, encryption, dedupe, and all the data services available to, for backup. So this is a self-sufficient unit. The, the Veeam backup will be uh, utilizing uh, gets used in this appliance which basically backs up all the holes brings it in virtual machine comes in if you do physical physical comes in as images or other things gets converted uh, snapshots is a native as I said and then uh, uh, the, the hypervisor is your choice of hypervisor spins up the virtual machine failovers and everything else is supported in appliance uh, in junction with the Veeam back um, and uh, replication from this appliance can happen to the cloud and uh, so I am going to uh, actually go to the cloud which is Azure cloud which might be your interest today and uh, in, in a cloud, Azure cloud itself we do have all kinds of different machines then you can deploy the iSCSI plus NAS, NAS itself plus replications, the, the encrypted uh, the NAS, uh, iSCSI drive, these drives can be, uh, you know, once you start them up, these drives can be uh, mapped to the local uh, Veeam appliance or used as uh, uh, with the Veeam cloud. And uh, the works, of course, it does have all the data services here. There's a full description of all the data services that you can get in the back end. Uh, today we'll present the one that we use often with the Veeam, which is the or a scale-out version, then I scale-out so you can deploy one uh, a virtual machine on this one and gives you a 16 terabyte and you can add another 16 terabyte and go on and on and on, on for hundreds of terabytes. So there is no limitation. There is no limitation on the file size. File sizes be, could be as big as the, the, the instant that you create, which in this case might be 16 terabyte or in other case might be 32 terabyte. Even the file size so there's no limitation that that so that gives you ability to really go after uh, big jobs as far as backup um, and then um, you know um, if you have any question we have this is this is of course you have an enterprise account you buy it from Microsoft if you have direct account with us uh, then you can get a direct license from us and bring your own license at uh, you know corporate license and then um, uh, you know, we have reseller programs and uh, we have OEM programs as well. So um, here we go. I'll give the control to um, David and David can start. If there is any question, please jump in and ask. Uh, otherwise, uh, David will start and uh, we'll, we'll see uh, how this appliance gets deployed. Okay, so to deploy the Stonefly appliance, you just log into your Azure account, uh, select new, do a search on Stonefly, and you would select the Stonefly scale out and enhance cloud storage. Mm 
somebody through the agreement and select create. This will bring you to the basics. In the basics, you're going to give it a name. Give it a username. And it sure does have some specifics as far as the length of the username. They also have some specifics as far as the password length. This username and this password. Uh, will be blocked uh, by by the Stonefly appliance, uh, so you really don't need to keep track of this username and password. On the resource group, if this is your first, um, if this is your first appliance in the group, or or, or your first. Uh, virtual machine in the group, you'll want to create a new group, or you can select an existing group. In this case, I have an existing group already set up. Location, you want all your appliances in the same location, so if you if so whatever um, location you select, all your appliances should be in that same location. If you're using an existing group, the existing group has that location. Otherwise, you would select the location. Once you've completed this page, click on the OK. size, the minimum size uh, machine for the particular VM is the A3. With the A3 you get 4 cores, 7 gig memory, and a maximum of 8 data disks. Each Azure data disk is 1 terabyte. So you select your size based on the number of, of uh, the amount of storage that you're going to require. If you select A3 at this point and later on you need more storage, that can be uh, changed to an A4 with 16 or an, or an A7 with 16 data disks. In this case, we'll just start with the A3. Click on Select. On this page, um, all the defaults that are listed here uh, are sufficient. Uh, you may want to change uh, availability sets, um, uh, things of this nature, but there's no requirement to. Once you've made any changes, uh, you would click on OK. This is just a summary and a validation. And the validation is passed. You would click on OK. And now comes the time to purchase. Uh, in this case, we're not actually going to go through the purchase. I've already 
have a couple of systems already set up. Um, and you can read through uh, the terms and click on purchase. We'll cancel out of this. Now we'll go down and we'll look at the virtual machines. I have a virtual machine set up here. One of the first things you want to do is to set up the public IP address. You want to configure the DNS name. In this case, I've already configured a DNS name, the SCV-CVM-NAS-1. Once you set up the DNS name, uh, you can log in to the storage concentrator. How you'll log into it is https colon slash slash and the DNS name. This will take you to the login screen. Use the default login ID and password. Log in. One thing that we do recommend is that on your initial login, you change the password uh, from the default to something uh, other than the default. To do that, you go to Users, Details, You would type in the new password, confirm the new password, and click on Submit. And once you've done that, you're going to need some data disks. go in to the VM, select this, attach new disk, uh, select the type of disk, standard or premium SSD, click on host caching of read write and click OK. Once the data disk is, has been added, you would go to the Resources tab, click on Discover. Once the discovery completes, the disks that have been added would be uh, shown. In this case, I've already managed them. They would be shown, new disks would be shown. Um, use type of none, you would just select managed and click submit. Volumes we do require NTP services. You go to the system admin page and add an NTP server. This can be any server, uh, any NTP server of, of uh, your desire. It doesn't have to be the us.pool.ntp.org. Uh, that's just used used as an example. Anytime you add a new node uh, to your scale-out configuration, you would want to use the same 
the same NTP server so that they're all syncing to the same NT, NTP um, time. Once you've typed in the uh, primary NTP server, uh, you can add the secondary, secondary NTP server, click on the use NTP, click on submit, configuration step is to go to system, network, local data iSCSI port, our Stonefly appliance uses separate ports for management and data. Uh, with NAS volumes you can use either the management or the data port. In Azure this port is all the same but it still requires a configuration for the private internal IP address. You would configure the private inter you would configure that as 255.255.255.255. For the public external IP address, You use the virtual machine's DNS name. For the public external TCP port, that would be 3260, the same as the local iSCSI listening port. Click Submit. In the case of the Azure NAS only systems, the NAS scale out systems, the iSCSI is still required as a configuration. The NAS does use this port uh, for communications between nodes. So if this port is not set up, the communications between the two nodes or three nodes or 100 nodes would fail. And once this is all configured, you can go to the NAS, NAS segments, create NAS segment. This segment can be one to the maximum uh, available space on the system. In this case, we'll use the whole space. This does take a couple of minutes because it's going out and formatting this uh, NAS segment. This NAS, NAS segment will be used to create a NAS volume. When you're creating segments, there are a couple of, of um, items that should be determined. Uh, the first item is how much space you're going to use. Uh, of course, if you're going to use you know, 48 terabytes, you want to add 16 disks to each node and create a 16 terabyte disk here. The next part is what is the largest file size uh, that you'll be creating on this NAS volume? If 
if you want to create a two terabyte volume or a two terabyte um, file, but you're using one terabyte segments, you would not be allowed to create that file on the one terabyte segments. Segment size has to be larger than your largest file size. The other thing to consider is that over time you're going to be expanding depending on your storage needs. When you create a segment, you want these segments to all be the same size on all nodes. So if you create a, a two terabyte segment here, and you want to and and you add a second node, you would want to create a two terabyte segment on that node. If you create a 16 terabyte node on your first node, you would want to create a 16 terabyte uh, segment on your second node. So the segment is now created. So now we can create a NAS volume. You go to NAS, Volumes, Create, Allocate. Give it a volume name. You can enter notes here to specify how it's going to be used. Then select SIFS or NFS or both. In this case we'll just be using SIFS. Click Submit. Again, this takes a couple of minutes for the volume to actually be created. Once it's created, it's usable. We will have to set up some user access to this volume. To do that, we we'll go to NAS, SIFS users. I have a user already configured. You can also add new users. Initially you would uh, need to add a new user. The password, confirm the password, click on submit, your user would be added. All right, David, I have a question uh, from Matt from ENSI. He wants to know if segment can be more than two terabytes. The segment can be the maximum size of the resources that are available on this system. So if you create, say, an A4 uh, system with 16 data disks, that um, uh, segment can be 16 terabytes. It can be anywhere from one ter one. Let's go back to the uh, resources. Okay, and here I've only defined two da two data disks in Azure. Um, we can see that um, here in Azure. There's two. Uh, disks that are created. If I was to create 16 disks, I would see 16 disks on this page. You would manage all 16 of those and then when you create your segment, uh, I don't have any space available, but if you went to your uh, NAS segment create page, 
it would list the amount available. And in the case where you have 16 data disks and none of those have been used, it would be 16 terabytes. Then you could use a segment size of 1 to 16 terabytes. The, depending on your requirements. Okay. Does that answer the question okay? Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. So we'll go back to the SIFS users. NAS, SIFS users, user access. We only have one user. We select the volume. There's only one volume. In this case, I'll just give it read, write, and admin. We'll click submit. Now, when we go to access that volume, we would use that user or whatever user that has been configured. Anytime you need to add additional users, you do that on the add update user page. Once that's done, you have a volume created, you have user access set up. Everything's configured on this storage concentrator. Now we need more storage. But to do that, we need to go to a second node. We add a scale out node. For the scale out node, you just click on the uh, NAS scale out. The first time you go to this page, or if this v if this node has uh, is not part of a scale out configuration it'll allow you to join a configuration to join the config to join a scale out configuration you come here to system information page and what we're going to use is this uh, DNS host host name I'll just copy that rather than type it. We'll paste it. Uh, and click submit. If you've only got two terabytes that are being used, you could uh, expand that volume uh, on the first node. You could add a second node. Uh, if this was 16 terabytes on the first node, uh, you'd have no choice uh, but to expand to a second node. To increase the size. Once it's joined, you'll be notified that it's joined the scale out. So 
Now if we go to the NAS and scale out, it'll show all nodes that are in the scale out. Once you've added a node to scale out, uh, you can manage your volume from either node. If you want to uh, expand a volume, you, you would go to the node that you've just added. Go to NAS, Volumes, expand a volume. Select the volume that you're going to expand. Click on Start. I've already created an, a 2 terabyte NAS segment on this second node. We're just going to add it. Click on Submit. When you expand a volume from uh, a single segment to uh, adding an, another segment, the uh, files that are stored on the segments that exist will be rebalanced uh, so that there's an even balance across all segments. That will take some time. In, in this case, uh, it doesn't take very long because there aren't any files that exist on it anymore. So you can see that the rebalance is already completed. There really wasn't any work to do. So now we have a volume. We've set it up. We've expanded it. Uh, it, it it's configured for access. Now how do we access it? In this case, uh, for Veeam, you would just go uh, uh, to your uh, Veeam backup and replication software, right click, add backup repository, give it a name, select shared folder, SIFS. Now the, share, the shared folder, um, how you get to the shared folder. Okay, you always want to use the DNS name in all cases. Uh, one of the reasons for this is that uh, in Azure, if your systems are down for a very long time because it's using DHCP, the IP address can change. As long as the DNS name is set up, there's no change. Okay. volume name. This share requires access to credentials. Add the access credentials. Once the access credentials have been uh, uh, configured, Let's select next. Now this is part of your Veeam backup uh, uh, configuration. It's it's not dependent on the storage. Uh, in this case, you, you do have load control. Uh, you can set the maximum 
uh, concurrent tasks, the default is four for Veeam. Uh, you can enable the <coughs> vPower NFS service on the mount server. Recommend it. Like I say, this is all part of the Veeam uh, configuration. You would consult your your uh, Veeam requirements for for uh, this setup. This is just a review page. Everything's okay. Click next. And finish. You now have a four terabyte Stonefly NAS backup volume uh, configured for your Veeam. So are there any questions for the uh, configuration of the storage concentrators? So David, if you had 16 terabyte on the first node and 16 terabyte on the second node, then you would see 32 terabyte there. Yes. Okay. And you have 32 and third node, then you have that. You could see this the 48. another 16, 48 terabyte, and you can go on and on and on forever almost. Correct. Now, in, in Azure, it's my understanding uh, that we um, offer the only appliance uh, slash method for configuring um, the, the, the greater than 16 terabytes per node or per per volume that's created with the Stonefly scale on as uh, there's no limit you just add another node another 16 terabytes another node another 16 terabytes another node another 16 terabytes if you need 96 terabytes of, 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 of storage um, we have the only solution available Okay, and of course, this NAS uh, can be used for other application. Uh, you know, you can create the volume and give part of it to Veeam, or you can use it for any other application as well. Correct. Right. Okay. The volume can be accessed through either node just by using the DNS name for the node. If you're having multiple hosts that are going to be accessing, I would rotate which node you're accessing the volume through. The more nodes, um, the more access points there are. You're not limited to a single access point. What, they, what this gives you is you've, you've increased your storage capabilities by adding nodes. By adding, uh, by directing hosts to use different access points, you've increased uh, your possible bandwidth uh, uh, from a networking standpoint. So every node is possible to be accessed, but if you assign it to a specific host to be accessed, then that host can write to that node, and then you spread the load across multiple nodes. So your ban you can utilize the bandwidth, uh, you know, as you scale out. Correct. So you, by scaling out, you've increased your storage size plus your uh, network bandwidth. Right. Okay. Any questions? Thanks. If anybody has any question, please contact Sam, and also Sam can send you the email, which is to be have the guide to set it and the full manual of using our product. Um, so all the attendees, uh, we have their email address. We'll send them a, a, a setup guide and user guide as well. So if they have any other questions, please contact us. 
if you uh, are planning to do uh, quite a bit of uh, this, uh, you know, please contact us as well for uh, any, uh, bring your own license or, or if you are thinking of uh, combining it with your product, uh, we'll be more than happy to talk to you about OEMing the product. Okay? Well, thank you for your attending um, the, 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 the webinar and I appreciate uh, your time. Thank you everyone for your time. Bye. Have a good day. Bye now.